Well, folks, in video number one, we talked about you stop buying real estate. We talked about a staring contest between sellers and buyers, and we talked about a transaction volume collapsing 70, 75, 80%. Now we're going to put a percentage on this. I don't think there's a lot of folks out there that really internalize and understand just how fast commercial values could change. We talked about a theoretical cap rate going from four to eight. Just yeah, I mean that could crush values. I mean, could you, could you run some quick math for us here by chance and okay. see what a, so a I, would be? I will, I will do this very, very simply for you. Right. So, you know, the way that you guys count for commercial property, the way that you calculate the value is you divide the net operating income by the cap rate. Right. So basically you have your rents, you have your expenses, whatever's left over is your NOI. And you divide that by your, uh, you know, by your by the cap rate. And mm -hmm. so this is before interest payments and before yeah. debt service, before you know that sort of stuff. So it's basically your EBITDA for the for the deal. Right. And so um so just to make it really easy, let's just say you've got a a deal with a million dollars of NOI, right? This okay. is you so this is probably be 200 unit apartment building. Probably yeah. have, it, it'd be got, a big thing. Yeah. A million yeah. bucks a year NOI. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So two million dollars of rents a million dollars of NOI, right? So if you yeah. divide that by a four cap, right? Mm -hmm. That implies a value of $25 million for okay. the asset, right? Yeah, which makes sense. 200 units, you know, B-class, do this, this that, that yeah. would make sense to me, right? Where we've come so, from. So, yeah. So $25 million at a four cap. However, okay. that same million dollars of income, huh. let's just let's just go up to a five cap, all right? Just okay. one point, all right? So you were at 25 million at a five at a four cap at a five cap, you're at 20 million. You by Ooh. one percentage point of loss or, or of, of expansion of your cap rate, you've lost five million dollars of value mm. on your asset. Just, yeah, that's one percent. That's 20 percent. So now you can see why sellers are like, I don't want to sell yeah. at this at a five cap because I bought it at a four cap. I was expecting to exit. I was going to raise the rents, raise my NOI, and it and go and exit at at a four cap too, right? That was my expectation. Just to give you like an idea, let's just say that. So this guy, you know, your owner does their value add. They get their they get their NOI from one million to one point two million. Okay? okay, and they still have got that four cap. Okay, how much value did they add by adding two hundred thousand of NOI? They've added five million dollars worth of value, right? Wow! So okay. at the four cap, yeah, at the four cap, if they yeah. maintained that, the four that cap. would have been their it's, model, right? That's why they would have bought it. I'm going to buy it at twenty five. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do right. that. I'm going to make it worth thirty million. And, and even even at let's just you know even if the cap rates expand a little bit, uh, sorry, and you go up to a uh, a four and a half cap, right? Let's just do that. Well, they've, they've actually lost, they've actually lost money just going up to four, even though they've increased their value, even though they increased the NOI, I mean, let me double check that to make sure. But if you, they've gone down, oh, sorry. Okay. I, I know I thought I did something wrong. So if they, if they, if they increase that value, the NOI by $200,000, mm -hmm. even if the cap rate goes up to four and a half, mm -hmm. they're still, now they're at 26.6 million, right? So they're, they're so still they a million a and a half up. Yeah. Yeah. There's yep. still a million and a half up, which is which is not bad, right? Mm -hmm. But they if you go up to a five cap at that 1.2, right? Then they lost money. They've lost a million dollars. It's now a $24 million asset, even though they increased their NOI. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to the original example of still a million dollars of NOI, right? Now we we know at, at a so we start out with a $25 million property to four cap. At a five cap, it's a $20 million property. What about at a six cap? Well, oh, no. six cap, it's a $16.6 million property. They've lost ten nine million million, right, or eight and a half million dollars. Yeah. Just, and again, like we talked about two points. Yeah. We talked about in video number one, the margin has historically been two and a half to 3% or 300 basis points above treasuries. Yeah. So it's not unheard. And again, a lot of what we're going through today and why there's a staring contest is because the rates have moved so quickly, right? 400 basis points, arguably yeah. going to be 500 basis points in a 12 to 14 month period. That's going to leave a mark on values. There are going yeah. to be folks that got into some bridge debt, two year debt 
it's it's actually going to be so bad, Jonathan. I expect banks and lenders to extend and pretend. I mean, I think that's going to have to happen in a lot of it cases. Has to, right? right? Yeah. yeah, because they're just they're just going to have to you know let people roll it over. Uh, but I do think that there's going to be some cases where they, frankly, are not going to be able to do that because so much value will be lost. The banks are not going to lend. You know, the banks are not going to extend a loan on a property that's now worth less than the than the principal of the loan. Agreed. Right? Agreed. So, so you're still going to have to be have some value left, some equity cushion left for them to extend you, right? So if you yeah if you bought if you bought in 2018, right, and now it's 20, 2023, and probably you've added okay. a bunch of value, you're probably fine. The people who are really at risk are the ones who bought at the top of the market last year. 20, oh, you bought in 2020. Yeah. Right. You bought even if you bought on the run up. Yes. And you get caught you get called at the wrong time. Yeah. I mean, you were you were in some in some serious hurt. Now, now just for for fun, let's let's uh let's think about this example. Let's get out of the multifamily world. Okay. Let's talk about downtown office. Oh, oh office. San Francisco's in so much trouble. Oh yeah, I mean, goodness. so 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 let's just start off with your same, your same million dollars of NOI, okay. right? Downtown office building that you know was say was eighty percent full when it yep. you know which is kind of normal for all. Well, actually, buildings. I have I actually have some numbers right because I've been I've been reading about San Francisco a lot because I've been calling it yeah. is you know it's going to be painful. So San Francisco office in twenty twenty right pre or actually yeah. say two thousand nineteen pre pandemic, yeah. um, record occupancy. In the ninety-five percent record wow. leases, right? Wow. Record rates, right? Kind of all and lowest cap rate. Yeah, just all bad. Now, some of the office buildings are sixty percent vacant. Yeah, they're having to discount rent, and uh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bloodbath. So, just a yeah. bloodbath. I mean, New York too. Although I, I read something very, you know, we'll get back to the math in a second. I read something very interesting the other day, though that. What's happening in the New York market? So overall, the New York market is uh, about fifty percent occupied at the moment, right? But but rents are rising in some buildings because what's happening is that there is a flight to quality. Everybody's leaving the old because oh, now the opportunity is like, hey, we can go rent at yep. like this brand new, gorgeous building, right? We're gonna get rid of this lease in this crappy old building, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so there's actually now bidding wars for the best office space in the city. Yeah, it makes sense. So rents, yep. so rents are actually rising at the premium buildings, but the old ones, oh. but the old ones are just sucking wind. So, you know, so now there's a big sort of well, what's going to happen with these buildings? Obviously, people are talking about conversions, but that you know, that's a that's a discount. Buildings. That's a yeah. huge discount. You know, a, a huge discount, or people are just saying, "Hey, like let let them let them fall to the market price where people want to rent there, right? Yeah. You know, like let the rents fall enough that you know entrepreneurs are going to be like, "Hey, yeah, I'll go rent I'll take an a office, shot. you know, take yeah. a shot." So, but anyway, so let's just play this out. Let's, so, let's say you had your your office building with your you know yep your NOI of at a million you know, bucks, yeah, at a million bucks, right? So you've got a twenty five million dollar office building at your four cap. Right. Yep. But now your NOI is is only five hundred thousand. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because so basically, have, folks, you have less tenants. You're collecting less rents. All those things. So yeah, right. You're, right. Totally agree. You more vacancy. So yep. Your your NOI is now five hundred thousand, and the cap rate has gone to six. Let's say right. Because well, everyone's you're being scared kind. of I'm being kind. I just want to show the math. <laughs> I just want to show the math. All right. So so let's let's see what the number there is. Oh, it's going to so, be bad. It's going to be single digits. Eight point three ah! million dollars. Oh, you go from twenty five million to eight. That is yeah. going to be. There are some building. This is why Brookfield walk. This is why Pimco walk. Yeah, this is There's why. There's going to be more people why, that just walk and say, "Here's the keys." Yep, they're just handing the keys back to the banks, right? So, uh, I mean, frankly, you can't sell the building. I mean, when you talk about a six cap, I mean, literally, these buildings currently have no value. At There's all. no value. No, There's, they have no value. They 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 can be sold for. You can't. I can't sell a building for scrap, right? But I mean, the equivalent of scrap in real estate, like they can they're, sell they're, it for yeah. the shell, right? Yeah, or exactly. the land they're, value. Like I think some of these buildings, frankly, may be just torn down. They'll they're going to sell for the land value, and they're going to go build condos, and they're going to build 
you know, exactly what it has to happen. Spaces. There's that's yeah. that is the real estate cycle in a nutshell. Well, uh, but but with a vengeance, right? Because usually oh, it's not this harsh, oh, right? Brutal. So yeah, yeah, I mean, think about it. What so again, let's just because there are buildings like this that were valued yeah. at 25 million bucks at 2019. You fast forward five years, the term's up, they got to go back. The 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 Brookfield, the Pemco, and many others go, nope, we're not gonna, we're not putting in more equity. We're done. Here you yeah. go, Mr. Bank. Mrs. Bank, I mean, they they got that on the books at I don't know, let's say the debts at eighteen million. There was seven in equity. Now it's eighteen. They're going to sell that thing for four million bucks, three and a half. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're going to take a huge haircut. I mean, the thing is, like you know, you got to be concerned about whether there's going to need to be some bank bailouts too. I mean, if because some of these banks that's are a good be- question. We got to figure out which banks are concentrated in New York and San Francisco. Because I think this is very regional. Yeah. I mean, it hurt, it'll hurt everyone, but I think there are some concentrations. Like, um, yeah, I wonder if there's any New York banks that are very New York heavy. I don't know. Well, I mean, look, you've got, you know, Chase, Citibank, which are headquartered here. I'm sure. Yeah, they have no, a lot I'm, of, I'm thinking more like the know, next tier, like New York Bank the, Mellon. Some of the smaller banks. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, I mean, they, they may be, you know, some of those banks may be exposed to these. The buildings, which, you know, look, three years ago, these were blue chip. Oh, they were great. You were bragging to your buddies. You were on the yeah. golf course going, hey, we just put a loan on this, uh, you know, New York skyscraper. Now you're like, shit, we got $18 million in debt. We The asset's worth four. That's an 80% write-off. How's that going to feel? Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be ugly, ugly yeah. for a lot of a lot of banks. All right, so, well, let's, uh, let's get into topic number three, which is the disaster that we've just uncovered, how it might unravel. But before we do that, how can people follow you, be a part of your Facebook group, and you got a hotel deal that you're excited about? How should people reach out? Yeah, I'm, so I'm looking for the uh, details. Sorry to step on you just now. Um, I So apartmentinvestorsclub.com on Facebook. This is the place to come and join us. We're actually doing, I don't know if you'll, this will be up in time, uh, but today at two o'clock Eastern, we'll be doing a live Q&A in the group uh, just for okay. fun. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm going to start doing some live Q&As there just uh to you know, try to connect with the group members more, awesome. provide more value. So join the group, come in, ask questions. I mean, it, it should be a good time. We're going to do it. It's two o'clock call. Eastern. Two o'clock Eastern. Yeah. So, okay. um, you know, we're going to do it as a, as a zoom call. So everyone can see each other's faces. So it won't be like just me talking to the screen or something. And uh, yeah, it'll awesome. be great. So come, come and join us there. Uh, if you want to get on my investor list, I don't know if you heard the, the, I'm really excited about this hotel deal that may be coming up. Also, didn't even mention, I have a multifamily deal right now that is live for accredited investors. Uh, so if you want to come and join the list uh, and, and see that deal, uh, it's we've got like a couple more days that we're raising for that. So kind of time is of the essence, but uh, you know, just Google Trooper Asset Management and you can uh, just fill out the investor form right there. And then the last thing is we have a multifamily conference coming up mm-hmm. April 26th to 28th in Las Vegas at the link hotel, reach out to me again uh, for details on that. Um, Michael's going to be there. It's great. I am. And uh, looking Olivia forward to too. Just, person. I mean, that's, that's a big deal, right? A lot of people want to meet Olivia. She's coming. Cause she's like, Hey, we, we have all this equity. This is something that we're going to have to do probably sometime in the future. So she wants to come and uh, sit in the room with me, which is very cool. Yeah, it's going to be great. So I, uh, so hope you guys will join us there. And uh, those, those are all the things I've got going on. All right, we will jump into number three, which is the real estate disaster that's in front of us. Thanks, buddy.